gang it's your girl ma the author and i'm back with part two of read with maha just refresher on part one i read tina's chapter and again this is from my book a savage love she can't deny it's a short story novel um again this is urban fiction so i do put a disclaimer on there you must be 18 and older to read my books but yeah so we're going to jump right in to Shantae's chapter. Let's go. I woke up to my phone ringing on the nightstand. I knew it could only be one person who would wake me up this early in the morning. I moaned and stretched, wishing the hell my voicemail would hurry up and pick up. I definitely wanted to get all my late morning sleep out the way before I left off to college. Oh, I decided to reach over to grab my now ringing phone again. I looked at the phone and saw it was my brother's longtime girlfriend, Portia. Jim and Portia were both 27 years old and shared one child together, my beautiful niece, Amira. He really needed to get his shit together, though. If you ask me, they should have been married by now. I think common law marriage was three years and they've been past that. She and he have been together since middle school, so I've been considering her my sis. Hey, hon, you called? I asked, hopping out the bed and power walking to the bathroom in my room. It felt like I was finna pee all over myself, but I made it. Yes, girl, so get your sleepy ass up and hit the mall with me before it's too late. Oh, and go get our nails done too before your little shindig. Girl, bye, that be your ass procrastinating. I could have gone the other day and snatched me up some real quick. Oh, uh, you know how Huggy Bear is. Oh, you better stop calling him that. You know he hates it, I laugh, wiping before it's starting my shower. Plus, you love that shit too, so don't flex. Anyways, you knew you couldn't go without your favorite sister-in-law, right? Yeah, 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 you are my only sister-in-law, Portia. I managed to say. She was right about that, though. She was right. We hung out a lot. I was cool with a lot of people, but didn't really hang with them. I did love spending time with Portia when she wasn't all up under my brother and doing whatever the hell he asked her to do. Where he at anyway? He all bad putting the meat on the grill. It was two weeks before graduation, and my people were throwing me a little get-together. Nothing major, just a few family members and friends. I was still in between two schools. I didn't want to be too far from my family, but I didn't want to be too close either. At least I had a month to figure it out. Oh, okay. Well, hurry up so we won't be gone all day. I hung up the phone with her and went to go brush my teeth before hopping in the shower. After a 30-minute shower, I grabbed a body towel and stood in front of my mirror to style my hair. I had the most ridiculous hair ever. People praised me for having naturally curly jet black hair i hated it though at times it was too big and hard to manage it came down to the middle of my back but when i did have time to strain it it was even longer i added some mousse and managed to tame it in one big messy bun at the top of my head i lotioned my body with my favorite georgia peach and sweet tea body cream afterwards i went into my dresser and pulled out something to wear Hey, Mama, I spoke, hugging her from the back. Hey, Ladybug, where are you going all dressed up? Ma, dressed up where? You getting it now, she smiled. I laughed so hard. My mama was 52 years old and still tried to be hip. Ma, I'm only going to the mall with Portia if she hurries up. Oh, Lord, that girl takes forever, she smiled. She made me smile <laughs> because I literally had said the same thing. I looked around the kitchen and it was filled with food for the party. My brother was only barbecuing and my mom down there did the rest. Have you thought about college yet? She had been asking me that question for the damn longest and I've been giving her the same answer. Not yet, mama, but I will. Thank God I heard a horn blowing who I knew belonged to Portia. I kissed my mom's cheek, grabbed my phone off the counter and ran out the door. I walked out wearing a lavender and white crop top sweater with some faded jeans and my all white Adidas. I never really wore makeup, but I did add a little lip gloss. Hurry up, man. I missed that pussy already. I heard my brother say over the Bluetooth. 
I regretted even getting in the car when I did. I cleared my throat, making my presence known. Baby, your sister just got in. She laughed. Oh, shit. My bad, sis. But your brother's strong. What can I say? Poor shit too good. She smiled and told she wouldn't be too long. I hate when y'all do that. Do what? Nothing. I replied as I shook my head. Oh, you look cute today. Thank you, hun. You know all the cute boys gonna be checking for you. I rolled my eyes and didn't bother responding. I swear, she was always trying to throw me on somebody. First, it was her cousin, Trey, who stayed in bitches' inboxes with dick pics, and then it was her cousin, Dwayne. Now, I did give him a chance, but hell, when we always go out to eat, I'm the one that's paying. What the hell I needed him for? Plus, he stayed with his mama and wasn't trying to better himself. So that was a bit no for me. I had no problem finding a man. I was just focused on myself right now, and that was that. I mean, I wish I had about like yours. Your damn niece took whatever little shit I had and said, bitch, bye. She added with a laugh. I joined her in laughing because I knew she wasn't lying. When Amir was a baby, Portia breastfed her. So she still had those big old titties, but her ass, hips, and thighs were gone. My brother still love her, though, and that's all that matters. I mean, all them damn honey buns you be eating and still don't gain any weight, that's got to be life. I sat there and hearing her go on and on. I didn't have a problem with my weight because I loved it, but it did give off the wrong impression sometimes. I was 5 feet 4, had a chestnut brown skin tone, light brown eyes, and according to every damn body, I was thick in all the right places. Basically, I wore size 9, 10 in jeans and a medium in shirts. We put up to a Peachtree Mall in no time. I was glad it was in my pack so we didn't have to be in there all day. Do you want to go get our nails done first or after? Portia asked, stepping out the car. It didn't matter to me one way or another. I was just ready to get in some air. It was hot outside and I knew I had sweated out my edges. I praised the Lord when we finally made it inside. We can do our nails first. I already know what I'm picking to wear anyway. I mentioned walking inside the shop. Soon as we walked in, there were two chairs open, so that was a plus. I picked a neutral peach color and had them do an overlay over my natural nails. They were already long, so I didn't need all the extra stuff. After walking out of MP Nails, we hit up one of our favorite stores, Forever 21. I figured since it was an outside party, I picked a tan wraparound dress and matched it with a peak toe strap up the lid sandal. I'll just wear something at the house. I just really want to get my nails done, she told me. Walking out the store behind me, her eyes was glued to her phone the whole time. Bitch, stop lying. My brother ain't going no damn well. We both laughed. She knew I knew she was lying. Jamie probably had texted her some old nasty shit like he always did. The pure thought almost made me sick. What's up, little mama? Another one. Damn, Shaw, you fine. I heard all behind me, but I kept walking. Tay, you hell, I swear. Push your ass was always getting a kick out of it, too. All the boys around here wanted was sex, but had nothing going on for themselves. That was a no-go for me, so I passed on it. When she dropped me off, I went to my room, took another shower to get ready. Mama told me Jim came by and picked up all the food she had cooked. I pouted just a little because I knew the banana pudding was going to be all gone. We both hopped in the car and headed to the south side. The party. Okay, now the party can get started, my brother streamed throughout the whole house just as I walked in behind my mama. He could be so petty sometimes, but I still love him. Everybody who knew me knew I had to make a grand entrance either way. No matter if I was around family or not, I walked in and did a 360 twirl to let them know she was ready. Hey y'all, I blurted, making my way around to speak to everybody. Hey baby, how you doing? I ain't seen you in a long time, one of my mama cousins said while hugging me. There were so many of them, I still can tell you all their names. Hey Titia Amara. Blurted out all while running into my arms. I picked her up and began to examine all the people who actually showed up. It was so many people, but I guess since we had free food and drinks, that's all it took. Sis, everybody already ate, so you can have at it. 
I nodded and walked into the kitchen, still holding Amara. I swear she loved her TT to death. After fixing me a little plate, I stood up at the bar and ate. For some reason, I felt somebody staring at me, so I started playing with Amara on the slide to find out. I glanced around the room and saw this fine-ass light-skinned dude standing next to Jimmy. He looked to be around his age, so it had to be one of his friends. He was wearing a red and gold hustle gang shirt, a pair of dark faded jeans, and a fresh white pair of forces. Jimmy had to have said something funny because old dude displayed a Colgate smile. Our eyes met briefly before I snapped my head back to my plate. All of a sudden, my body felt warm and I was embarrassed. Man, put that big girl down, Jim fussed, reaching for Amara. I looked up and saw Cutie standing right next to him. She good, you know how she is, I spoke, planned it off by fixing the tutu she was wearing. Oh, my bad, my nigga, I ain't even introduced y'all, Jim ugly ass just had to say. Now I had to look up at him. Tay, this my homeboy Reggie. Red, this my little sister Shantae. Hey, I briefly looked up and spoke. What's up, little mama? He flashed that million dollar smile, and I swear my heart went numb, and I could feel myself getting worse between my legs. I mean, I wasn't no virgin or anything. Last year, I had given it up to this bitch boy who didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Totally a waste of time, if you ask me. I scurried out the kitchen, seeing that everybody had started a quick combo. After the party had died down and the oldies left, shit really got cracking. So many blunts and bottles were being passed around. I had already shared one blunt aloud with my brother and Reggie and took three shots of tequila to the head. We had been flirting with each other the whole night. I was stoned and had to piss like a racing horse, so I got up thinking no one noticed. Turning my head from washing my hand, I looked to see somebody had opened the bathroom door. Oh, my bad. I ain't think nobody was in here. Reggie lied, looking like a whole snack. His presence had me hot and bothered. It could have been the munches or I was just craving dick. One way or another, I was high as hell and I wanted his ass. Oh, hey, I spoke, turning around, watching him look me up and down. What's up? He answered in a deep, sexy tone. After staring each other down, he finally walked up to me, backing me into the sink. He leaned down for a kiss, and I welcomed it. I could still taste a hint of Hennessy and weed on his breath, and the shit gave me a rush. I deepened the kiss while throwing my arms around his neck. Take this dick like a big girl, T. Take this dick like a big girl. I kept chanting in my head. Shit like this rarely happened to me. His hand went to untie the strap around my dress. His lips left mine and began kissing me on my jawline while my dress flew open, revealing my lace black bra and thong set. He looked down at my 38 C's and unclipped the front of my bra. He then leaned down and began sucking and slightly biting on them one at a time. I'm on enjoying the sensation I was getting from him. He gripped my waist and then pulled my thong down. My hand went to the back of his head as he picked me up and set me on the edge of the sink. He paused for a second as if we were having a mental conversation. I was excited and scared at the same time. Everybody had pretty much left except my brother, Portia, and a few others. It felt like a slow motion movie, but in reality, everything was happening so fast. One minute we were staring at each other, and the next thing I felt was his warm pink lips on my pussy. I tried to muffle my moan, but for almost 10 minutes, he was literally in the fuck out of me. I unbuckled his belt as he came back up, latching onto my lips. After his pants were loose, he dropped them to his ankle hooked my left leg, and slid his dick right inside me. Oh my God, I moaned into the crook of his neck. Thank God I could still hear the music blaring in the living room. He started fucking me slowly at first, but after a few minutes, he pumped up the speed. It was so intense. I started matching his thrusts from underneath. God damn, this pussy is so fucking good, he managed to say with every stroke. Knock, knock, knock. My eyes got wide, Reggie's strokes paused, 
and I sat quietly with his dick still inside me, praying whoever it was at the door would go away. My heart was beating so fast. They knocked again, but this time Portia had come and asked who was in the bathroom. It's me, girl. I'm almost finished, I blurted out, trying not to laugh. Reggie still had it pulled out of me. Oh, okay, she said, walking away from the door. After a minute or so, Reggie pulled out of me, and I hopped off the sink. I hurried and grabbed my niece's wet wipes and tried to wipe some of the wetness between my legs before clamping my bra together and tying my dress back up. No words were exchanged while Reggie wiped pull his pants back up, and then fasten his belt. After I felt like I was decent, I cracked the door open and peeked out to see where everybody was. I didn't see anyone, so I walked out the door, grabbing my purse, cell phone, and telling Portia I was ready to go. Okay, you guys, so that was Tay's point of view. Again, a savage love she can't deny. I want to know how y'all like it so far. So this is part two. Leave in the comments what you think about Tay's point of view. But that's it, you guys. I will be back for part three, and it's going to be Reggie's point of view. So we're going to find out about Reggie this time. Part three, stay tuned. Leave comments. Also, make sure you like, subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell to let you know when Read With My Heart is live. Bye.